Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. It's time for one of your favorite videos on the channel, an update on OLED monitor burn-in. I've been aggressively burning in my 4K OLED monitor for 15 months now, so I'm gonna take a look and see how the display is holding up. Hopefully there hasn't been too much degradation since the last time I checked in three months ago. I really do want this monitor to last a decent amount of time, but we'll explore all of that today in just a moment. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their MagSafe 100 watt two in one power bank. This desktop power bank allows 100 watts of fast charging via one of the three supplied USB outputs, enabling a 100% MacBook charge in just an hour and a half. It also offers a flip up 15 watt MagSafe dock for your MagSafe compatible devices and intelligent current matching to ensure more reliable battery safe charging. With the ability to charge four devices simultaneously, excellent build quality and compact design, this power bank is suitable for any and all of your mobile devices. We've been using Ugreen products in the office for a while now, and not only are they reliable, but they also offer great value. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Like the last few updates, there have been no changes in how I've been using my MSI MPG 321URX QD OLED. We're still very much discussing a worst case scenario for OLED usage. I almost entirely use this display for static content, like writing scripts, browsing the web, editing videos, and so on. As a result, there's basically no content consumption or gaming occurring on this display, the complete opposite of how we normally recommend people use OLED panels. Now, if you missed the last couple of updates, I'd recommend going back and checking out at least the initial video, just so you get an idea of the setup I'm using and why I've decided to use MSI's 4K 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor as my workstation display. But basically, the idea here is to perform a real-world test of OLED longevity in the worst possible configuration, effectively burning in the display on purpose. I swapped my 32-inch 4K IPS LCD for this QD OLED and changed nothing else about my setup, so no dark mode or screen savers or anything like that, and that's to see whether OLED monitors really can be used as LCD equivalent productivity displays long term. I use my monitor more than 8 hours a day, and sometimes that usage is continuous with no breaks for the display to turn off and rest. This leads to hours upon hours of static usage, something that has been perfectly fine for LCDs for a long time, but is quite risky on newer OLED screens. The progression to this point has been as follows. After one month and 200 to 250 hours of usage, I saw no signs of burn-in. After three months, 650 to 750 hours of usage and 71 panel compensation cycles, I saw faint signs of burn-in. After six months, 1200 to 1500 hours of usage and 141 compensation cycles, burn-in was a bit more noticeable than at three months, but not overly problematic. Then at nine months, 2000 to 2300 hours of usage and 224 compensation cycles, there is still some burn-in, but there were relatively few changes compared to the six-month results. The most recent update we did was at 12 months, 2700 to 3000 hours of usage and 322 compensation cycles. Again, burn-in progressed at a slow pace, but worsened compared to previous results, with a more visible line down the center of the display and more prominent taskbar burn-in. After 15 months, the 321URX is reporting 413 compensation cycles, and I would estimate around 3400 to 3800 hours of total usage. This continues to be around 8 to 10 hours of usage at 200 nits of brightness per compensation cycle, and around 8 hours of screen use every single day for 15 months. The recommended rate for panel protect cycles is every four hours of use, so our test continues to be particularly stressful, especially when factoring in the high level of brightness and how I don't put the monitor to sleep after a few minutes of inactivity. The display side burn-in protection features are enabled, and everything here is a realistic use case, it's identical to how I used an LCD, but it's probably more of a worst case scenario than a typical usage pattern for an OLED buyer. In this update, we're showing the 6, 9, 12, and 15 month results. Again, we're focusing on the center of the display, which is where in previous months there was visible burn-in. A line down the center of the screen, most likely due to frequent use of side-by-side -side applications. 
I've made a couple of changes to how these burn-in results are rendered to hopefully combat YouTube's compression, including adding some static noise into the image, which seems to reduce compression artifacts and makes the burn-in more visible. I experimented with a couple of solutions, and this seems to work the best when trying to highlight small differences in dark images. I'd still recommend watching this video at 4K for the highest image quality, and I'm also offering a much higher bitrate version of the burn-in examples for Patreon members to examine. This version removes the noise added to the YouTube version and uses video of the screen instead of static images for higher fidelity. Unfortunately, we just can't show the raw examples like this on YouTube without compression completely destroying the image quality. First, we're going to look at the original unenhanced examples, which roughly show how burn-in looks in real life. If you look closely at these images, and it can be hard to see because the level of burn-in is not overly obvious, you'll spot three main burn-in artifacts. There's a line down the center of the screen, which corresponds to the border of applications when used in a side-by-side -side configuration. This is mostly how I use this 32-inch panel for productivity work. I'll often have a web browser snap to one side and a Word document snap to the other side. The border is darker than the application windows themselves, so we're effectively getting inverse burn in here. The brighter app windows have degraded the left and right sides of the monitor faster than the darker borderline down the center. Darker, lower brightness pixels degrade more slowly than brighter pixels. The second artifact is taskbar burn in seen down the bottom of the screen. I use a dark taskbar, so again, this is inverse burn in. The brighter application windows above the taskbar area have degraded the screen faster than the darker taskbar itself. No app icons are visible, it's just a general shadow where the taskbar is located. The third artifact is more subtle. The right side of the screen is more degraded than the left. This is because if I only have one app open, I tend to favor snapping to the right side over the left side. This means the right side is more likely to be showing brighter content and thus burning in that side faster than the left side. The first two artifacts have been visible for all four examples shown on screen, from 6 months through to 15 months, though the level of burn-in is slowly becoming worse, making these artifacts more visible. The line down the center of the screen was visible as early as 3 months into testing, and the taskbar burn-in began around the 6th month mark. The right side burning in faster than the left started to become noticeable at 12 months and is now more visible at 15 months. But across all of these issues, there hasn't been a huge leap in degradation over the last three months. It's more of a steady decline. Now let's enable the burn in enhancement filter to make these artifacts more obvious. I've updated the filter I've been using for this month's video to make it even more clear for those that have struggled to identify burn in previously. I've also optimized this filter for every example, allowing us to extract the burn in artifacts across a broader range of images. To be clear though, these are digitally enhanced images of the screen that deliberately exaggerate the small differences in uniformity the camera is capturing. This is not how the panel looks in real life. Life. With the enhancement filter enabled, these burn in artifacts are more noticeable, and you can see that burn in is actually impacting all of the examples. While it's most noticeable in the mid gray range, both using the enhancement filter and in real life, there is also a subtle level of burn in affecting dark grays and lighter grays and whites. The line is most prominent, but taskbar burn in is also visible. Of particular interest are some of the mid-gray enhanced results, which show the left-right uniformity issue getting worse over time from 6 months through to 15 months. The right side is visibly darker now than it was back at 6 months in several of these examples, and there is clearly more degradation today even compared to our previous snapshot after 12 months of use. This has the effect of making the line more visible, because it makes the boundary between the left and right side of the monitor more distinct. This is something I'm starting to notice more in applications with a dark background like Premiere. The line is becoming easier to notice, and grey uniformity is getting worse. We can also use color examples to explore how individual subpixels are degrading. This is pretty hard to spot in the regular shots, but there are some faint signs of burn in throughout each of the color examples. But when we enable the enhancement filter, things become more obvious. The red subpixel has degraded the least, though at the 15 month mark there are some very faint signs of vertical line and taskbar artifacts. The blue subpixel is the second most affected, with more obvious levels of burn in, and this goes back to the 6 month mark. 
This subpixel seems to be degrading slowly, with only small changes comparing each 3 month interval, though the 15 month result is the worst in terms of vertical line and taskbar artifacts. Then we get to the green subpixel, which is clearly the worst of the three, and shows all three of the issues we've been talking about in the most obvious way. The green subpixel also appears to be degrading the fastest, particularly when looking at left-right uniformity. Uneven aging of the subpixels will affect color temperature over time. If red ages more slowly than blue and green, the panel will slowly shift red. This is something I noticed in the previous update. My panel started out with a 6450K white point and had shifted to 6350K after 12 months. With that said, I haven't noticed a significant difference between 12 and 15 months. The test results were within the margin of error. Maximum brightness is also unchanged. The panel is still hitting 243 nits peak after 15 months, the same as every other month. The question now becomes whether these artifacts are actually affecting my usage of the display. At this point, the answer is still no for the most part. Taskbar burn-in is basically a non-issue because the taskbar is always visible. So uneven degradation in this area versus the application area isn't really visible. The only time this would potentially be an issue is when viewing something full screen. Right now, I only watch full screen videos on this monitor rarely, and when I do, the taskbar burn-in is not visible. The vertical line and left-right uniformity issue is mostly not visible, especially in the main apps I use like web browsing and anything where I'm using a normal side-by-side -side configuration. Where it is visible and potentially problematic are in full-screen apps with a dark background like Photoshop and Premiere. These artifacts are becoming more visible and more annoying over time in those apps, but for now, it's more of a cosmetic annoyance than something that actually affects my work. These problems are practically never visible in full-screen video content. For now, it requires a uniform dark gray background for me to notice. While this QD OLED panel does continue to degrade slowly, I think the outcome to this point has been relatively good. I've used this display for somewhere between 3400 and 3800 hours, and burn-in has so far been quite minor. I was expecting to see more burn-in after this length of time, particularly with the extreme worst-case scenario I've been using. In the last update, I said I was optimistic the 321URX will have a level of burn-in after two years that isn't distracting for everyday use. I think that's still accurate after the 15 month mark. The results I'm seeing are still positive news for people with more realistic usage scenarios. 3600 hours of use is equivalent to 8 hours a day of static content every single day for 15 months, or 8 hours a day 5 days a week for over 20 months. In a more mixed workload with say, 4 hours a day of static content, these 15 month results would roughly equate to 2.5 years of use. And that's assuming a similar usage pattern with 200 nits of brightness light mode, a lower than recommended rate of compensation cycles, and no meaningful screensaver. Making some minor tweaks to optimize your OLED's lifespan, things that shouldn't impact your usage all that much, and I could easily see those timelines extend quite a bit. As a reminder, burn-in with OLEDs is directly related to hours of usage and is cumulative. So if you only use static apps for four hours a day, you should expect to see double the lifespan compared to using static apps for eight hours a day. Mixing in dynamic content between periods of static content usually won't improve the burn-in results or clean the screen. It's all related to the cumulative number of hours displaying the same static content on screen. Based on these results, I currently believe an OLED will be okay for productivity work for between two and three years, depending on how frequently you use the display for static content. It's possible I'll extend that timeline as we continue to run this burn-in test, but that's all I'm willing to commit to based on the evidence I've seen so far. Two to three years is okay, considering I was expecting to see problematic degradation after just a year or so. These panels, at least this specific QD OLED, seems to be a bit more resilient to desktop burn-in than I anticipated. However, it's still not amazing given LCDs easily last five to 10 years without any issues whatsoever in most circumstances. The power supply, for example, is more likely to fail than the backlight itself. I think it's very reasonable to expect a $1,000 monitor to last for at least five years. So only getting two to three years of decent use out of an OLED would be disappointing, but we'll see how things go over the coming months.
So anyway, that's it for the OLED burn-in update after 15 months. We'll be continuing to do this series right here on Monitors Unboxed every three months or so, so make sure you're subscribed to see more of that in your inbox when those videos come out. If you do want to support the independent testing that we do right here on the channel, consider signing up to our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. Not only will you be facilitating us to actually make these sorts of videos, but you'll gain some cool access to benefits, perks, that sort of thing, as a nice little bonus for our Patreon members. So we've got our Discord community, we've got monthly live streams, we've got some BTS content, ICC profiles, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.